Good evening, guys. This is Spirit Journey, and today I want to talk to you about an experience that I had yesterday. I was going to visit family, and on my way there, I was approached by a man. I had never seen this man before, but what he asked me about, he, he asked me a question, and I don't remember exactly what the question was, but the question had to do with this organization, a, a black organization, and he, he posed it as a question to engage in your conversation. And the guy looked kind of, he, he wasn't, he wasn't just very me to be honest. And I actually thought he might have been on the influence because his eyes looked very red. But I said, let me hear him out. And, but sometimes you can't always, I mean, some people just have red eyes and it's maybe they were, the eyes were tired, but I was just something, uh, I guess because of the question and the organization, I, I was just curious. And what was interesting about the conversation, we, we spoke for about an hour and a half, that's how long it took me to get to my destination. And we spoke the whole time about this organization, and he did say up front that he wanted to open up chapters here and how many people he wanted for each chapter. For one thing, I guess what this video is going to be about is about, when, about any organization, good or bad, I, I thought the, the, the no's or things to look out for. So that's what this video is going to be about. Again, I, I'm not going to give the name of the organization, but what I thought was alarming was he, he, he doesn't know who I am. And you can't always judge a book by its cover. And for him to ask me the, the question, you know, you, you don't know who you it could be an undercover person who works in law enforcement. And so also I want to say that when you approach someone, you should dress accordingly. That you know, if, if you if you're representing an organization, make sure you don't have red eyes, you know? <laughs> Make sure that you're, you're well-groomed, well-dressed. I'm not saying designer clothes, but to dress neat. So that alone told, told me that I wouldn't even want to get involved with this organization because of their presentation. And that if this is what they're about, and I've heard of the organization before, you know, over the, you know, over the internet and, you know, general news that you find on television. I think you should have a good appearance. Again, if, you, if you're dressed a certain way, you're actually going to attract or repel certain people. And you want... Any organization that you belong to, you want to get the best. And so if you dress shabby and you don't speak uh, that clearly or that eloquently, you know, you, you're saying that your organization is of a certain level. And so if that's the case, how are you going to function? How are you going to obtain the goals that you have if just on a base level, this is how you perform, you know? So I thought that was important to point out. 
I also believe that you should be careful who you approach. That you should know, like, let's say you want to form a religion, you know, you know. Let me just say, like, a, like a religion or something like that. You want people of the same mindset. You want people who you know. If you don't know them, just because what someone is wearing at the time doesn't mean that they present themselves like that at all times. And let's say at other times they're dressed in a different way that really better represents who they are. You know what I'm saying? So I thought that was really telling. I know there were some other things I wanted to say. Um, you should have a goal in your organization. And really, most of what, as I, I think already just mentioned, you should have people that you know, people that you're raised with, people who you went to school with as little children. As I see what, what's happening in the U.S., people are infiltrating groups and they're not who they appear to be. They could look like you, talk like you, dress like you, but you don't really know their family, their relatives, what, 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 what's their makeup, what's their religion, what's their story. And if you don't know someone's story and you, you're starting an institution, that institution could, could get compromised. And so, you should be careful. And to really, you know, examine the person. Let, let's say, okay, you don't know a particular person. You observe them over a course of time so that you get to know who their friends are, who, uh, who are their enemies, what, what are their habits, what, what do they like to eat, what, what is their health like. I say in any institution that you want to just um, start off, you want to make sure you have healthy people. People who are, are strong. They don't have any serious diseases or they're, they're weak or anything like that. You want someone strong. If you're going to start off something uh, new, you want that. What about their education? If you're starting something new, you want the, those I guess like officers, people in charge, you want them to have specialties. You know, you, you're going to be selective who you bring up, bring aboard your institution, okay? And especially if something that you want it to develop o o over time. And so these people should fit the it's like a puzzle, and, and each piece you look for that has certain specialties. Maybe someone has a specialty with communications, someone has a specialty with um, computers, someone who might have knowledge about nature, you know, uh, plant medicines. You might have a, an MD. You may have an engineer, someone who knows electrical work. You don't get you know what I'm getting at? So these are things I think when you're starting anything new, you, you it's like you have what the end results would be in writing. You know, it's like you, you you're working backwards, you're working as if you already have that institution. You you have what it's going to look like, where it's going to be, all those things. And then, one by one, you start checking off and filling those needs of that new institution. Especially education. You, you want intelligent people on board. The person also was, I think, testing me and asking me about, like, the, the, the importance of weapons. Don't you think we should have weapons? You know, you know how are we going to protect ourselves? And... I said, it's not about weapons, 
It's about community. You want a community. And once you have your community, you know, once you have a community or body of believers or whatever, then you know what you need to protect. Because every thing that, that you know, institution or uh, property, those, those things that you need, you know, uh, things to protect what you own, it has to be uh, geared for those items. You know, so you, th this type of thing is not going to be as effective as that according to your location or what the thing is that you want to protect. You know, whether it's an institution, um, a, or a concept that you want to start, you know? So, here yeah, this person I thought was trying to, like, you know, tell me what, I, what he thinks I want to hear. You know, a lot of people of color, you know, in the, the Americas, they, they're so up about, you know, hey, let's get things and to protect ourselves and blah, 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 you know. But, you know, it's good to be able to protect yourself. But I'm thinking in history, in the U.S., you have institutions and they may have weapons. You know, like, like uh, David Koresh, that, that place he had in Waco, Texas. That they had tons of, of weapons. But they could not defeat the government. Okay? So, here you have a person who started some type of institution in Texas, had weapons, but they they failed to be able to protect themselves and most of them perished and many of them children so it's not it's not the, the having weaponry is not the answer but i would say that you you want to start something that you know it's i in, in my opinion again all this is just an opinion that i want to share for food for thought that you want, you want to live a life that you want, and as if you already have it. So let's say I want this, this great utopia, you know. So I'm thinking, okay, live like you're already in that utopia. So no matter where you are in this world, you know, that, that, that sense of utopia or community already exist in your heart and in your mind and then finding people that think like you that, that that's how you start a community or an institution live as if you already have it and then you build up to that reality so it becomes tangible and then from that point to be able to protect that institution you know, to be able to, let, let's say, you have your own home. And you have your home in, in an area where other people, just like you, live. But it's spread out. And that you have a lot of land. And you have your own, let's say, sanitation, or mail system, um, let's see, a garden, you know, farm. If I mentioned police force, all these things, your own churches, own doctors, all these things. So it's like a like a like a a mini country, a, a, a miniature world, all there. And I think it's important to know, you know, what what the people in this community are to look like, so that you'll be able to spot out immediately. Who is an intruder? Many of these organizations that are popping up, whether it's religious or government or whatever, that they seem to have people that come in, and again, they might look like you, talk like you, um, but they're not you. There's somebody else. And so something that will be identifiable 
so that anybody, anybody with, with eyesight would be able to spot out that person and then you notify the people in charge. You know, so, so you, you'll be able to protect what's yours. And so protection doesn't have to be having these, these uh, missiles and things like that. It's as basic as being able to identify who doesn't belong. And to be very discreet about it, and then you handle that situation according to what was agreed upon, agreed upon within that society or uh, institution, whatever. And it applies to any, you know, what I'm, what I'm saying, in my opinion, fits many modes. Many, many, many you know, countries, cities, uh, religious institutions, you know, all, all types of things. You have to be able to identify who doesn't belong. So maybe people of that institution, maybe they wear certain uniforms. You know, like in some African societies, tribal societies, they have facial markings. So that at a distance, people will easily and quickly be able to identify who they belong to or who they don't belong to and then act accordingly to that information. So I, I feel that people have to be really careful these days that sometimes people are approached because they, they're looking for a pansy. They're looking for someone who's, you know, they're angry, uh, angry male or the angry woman and you know tell them things oh you know we, we want to do this and that and and, and, and uh, you know, get weapons and this and that they want your money pro most likely and that's all that's also what I was thinking that they're recruiting trying to recruit suckers and when you recruit what 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 are you recruiting for? If this is something that's new, they want your money. And they want to use your money for whatever purposes they claim that they want to use it for. And just because they claim that they want to use it for X, Y, and Z, doesn't mean that that's what's going to be used for. And you could be just being tested also. Say, hey, is this, will this person take the bait? You know? You have all these people with trigger fingers and they want to uh, hurt and get somebody else to do the, you know, pull the trigger. So just be aware and to keep your cool. And if, if people have temptations, whatever, you know, to pray about it and then ask the universe to, to remedy the problem. But don't get involved in something and become a a victim, you know. I know there was something else I wanted to make mention of. Oh, let me see if I can remember. This individual that I saw yesterday, he he was in the military, and he was in the uh, war in Afghanistan, and he shared that he was, you know, he was in battle. And that he, he mentioned that some of the things that was going on, and I thought it was very interesting. He, me he mentioned that he saw people with like, uh, like, a, like a smartphone, and that he saw people blown up. He saw a man, uh, you know, everything seemed like okay, and then he, uh, the person, this, the, the terrorist or whatever, pulls out, you know, had a, a, a smartphone or whatever, and he was saying something, and then he blew himself up. It, it, he, he detonated the bomb with a cell phone. And then he even mentioned that it was a, a, a woman he saw there. Uh, I think it was a Muslim woman, wearing Muslim attire. And that he, I mean, she had 
the, the cell phone also, but the thing, she, it didn't blow her up, but it, it detonated something else at a distance, and how this affected him, and it caused him to be hospitalized for two years, he shared with me. But interesting, his commanding officer, like he mentioned about his commanding officer going to different, I mean, I'm sorry, his commanding officer had become a police, you know, after the military, he went into the police force, and I think he might be a captain or something at a police station, but he's doing okay. So I thought that maybe his commanding officer, that maybe that person wasn't around on the field, you know, maybe he was at a distance, like he, like, um, he instructs them and then the soldiers or whatever, they run out and do whatever, but he's like kind of away from action. But he said, no, he was there at all times. He said, this, he was my commanding officer. He's, he has to be there. He has to instruct. He also shared with me that his, um, what do you call it, his company, you know, the group, you know, when, when you're in the military, you get assigned with a X number of people, and in his group was 13, and he told me that all but five survived, and he said the, the, that the five that did not survive, you know, out of the 13, that they didn't follow instructions. So he learned that, you know, he had a good commander, but some of the people, it, it went to their head that they thought because of all the training they had that, you know, they knew everything and that they didn't. And unfortunately, they, all of those people, you know, passed away. But only those who listened to their company commander, they survived. You know, so it, it stressed him out, this particular war effort. And I think why I'm mentioning that part of the story is that I guess to be careful what you're getting yourself in, that you, 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 you never know what you're going to be sent to do. But if you're a soldier, follow instructions that yes, you're trained, but, you, but you're not God, and you can get hurt. And what was the other thing? Um, here, to get a specialty. So here, this man that I met the, the other day, I, I didn't ask him what type of work he does, you know, what, what, you know what, what, where his income is coming from, you know. I didn't ask him anything like that, but I get the impression that he's living in very, very modest means. And here he's another black man with limited resources. And here he had a commanding officer, and here he makes it into you know a career. And so it's really something why he as a, um, he was in the Marines, this guy, and I'm thinking, you know, some, I think some blacks and Hispanics from the Caribbean, that they're being geared to enter the Marines and the Army, but what skills does it give you when you get out? I mean, unless you like weaponry and things like that, but if you're just a regular person and, you know, you really don't want to be exposed to violence for long, you know, you want to do your stunt, you know, and then come back, be a civilian, and, you know, have a nice, restful life. You have to make sure you, you get a skill, you know, with your service that you can market, you know, whether you, you, you know, you're working for some other institution or something. You need that because there's a lot of us are homeless. A lot of us fall into drugs. It's rampant. 
And so I'm looking at this guy, and he, he, he doesn't look the best, to be honest, you know, his, his physical appearance. And it's, it's so common amongst uh, blacks in the military, especially if they're in the Marines or the Army. Make sure you get a skill when you go in. And to study well for the ASVAB, you know, to, to, to get yourself, you know, ready for taking tests and things like that, you know. So it, it gives you at least extra points. And the higher your score, the better chance, you know, they, they present to you what you qualify for, you know. So if you don't score well, you're going to get a real basic job. You're not going to be treated that well, you know. Uh, so you want you want something good. You want uh, unless you want to maybe make it a career. I mean that's that's fine also if that's what you choose. So that's what I want to share with you. And you know, with every career, with you know, th there's certain um, pitfalls of it. And it's not all glamorous, and that man proves that, that it's not glamorous. He did two, what do you call it, two, um, I forget the term that you call it, two tours of duty, you know, in, in combat. And it affected him. So, be careful out there, and choose the best for yourself, and don't let just so-called college be your motive in going into the military. You know, there's, you know, things right now in the military, it's not the same as in the past. Things are more questionable. But so long that you at least do your homework regarding the different branches of the military and what you're getting yourself into, you know, and talk to people who are in the military and uh, or family who have been in the military so you can make a well-rounded opinion on what what branch to go into or maybe it's not for you okay so thank you for listening bye bye this information, you, you think that it's valuable, and you know, be aware of what's going on around you, and definitely me, you know, I have to be aware of what's going on, and, you know, not everything appears to, you know, to be what it really is, so, I just want to thank you for listening, and to take care. Bye-bye.